When was the last time you took a leap of faith trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. All right. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. I am your host, Colleen Biggs, and I'm so excited uh, to be able to be back. And um, we've got a really great um, lesson today on creating more in less time. And Lois Kofi is going to be our guest today. But before we get to Lois, I would like to make sure that we have the opportunity to thank our sponsor of today's show, which is Ally Spine Center. What sets what sets this office apart from other offices is their focus and expertise in treating degenerative spinal conditions, including disc disease, bulging and herniated discs, spinal stenosis, neuropathies, sciatica pain, tingling and numbness in the arms, hands, legs, feet, as well as severe and chronic neck pain and headaches. We specialize in corrective care, not just the treatment of symptoms with physical medicine modalities. In many cases, pre and post images are used to help determine the structural improvement of the spine. I have actually been a customer of Ali Spine Center and they've helped me so much. If you're someone who's been suffering from neck or back pain, spinal stenosis, sciatica, or other pain conditions, and you haven't experienced chiropractic in an integrative corrective care office, please call them and make an immediate appointment so that you can get back to living your best. And you can reach them at 809 or 480-809-4700 or visit them at AllieSpineCenter.com. And thank you, Dr. Chris Condon, for being our sponsor of today's show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you, if you would like to be able to see this video, please go to Colleen Biggs on Facebook and follow me there as well as on Instagram at Colleen Biggs. I'm in the blue shirt on both of those, so you can find me uh, with my picture. And also, we're going to be talking a lot about the LEAP community today. So just a reminder that the LEAP community is available for you to be seen, be heard, and be visible. It's not just about connecting and collaborating. It's about business building for female entrepreneurs in a way that keeps you in the spotlight. All right, let's go ahead and get to our show for today. And I would like to introduce Lois Coffey, who is a professional speaker and transformational sales coach that has coached thousands of people in business and healthy lifestyle since the year 2000. As a former Ironman triathlete, that's right, you heard me, a former Ironman triathlete, Lois's superpower is creating more in less time in a balanced way. Hence, why we're talking about creating more in less time today. With now over 23 years experience in sales and coaching, as well as success and failures, her passion is to help you create your best life, best health, best wealth, and best wisdom along the sales path. Lois, welcome to today's show. Hey, Colleen. I'm so excited. I'm I'm really excited to be here because I see you all over and Facebook and LinkedIn. It's it's such an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, visibility is key. And I always tell everyone that they need to see you everywhere, right? That's really how you get noticed. If no one knows your brand exists, then they're not just going to come knocking on your door or looking you up in the yellow pages. And I said that because that's the old way of doing business. We don't do business that way anymore. Now we can instantly get connected with someone through LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, online, emails. Like there's so many ways to get connected with people. I remember one of my jobs back in 2003, the internet had just started and we were getting away from the mail room and starting to email people documents instead of mailing them. Isn't that crazy? I mean, to think how far we've come. So you said 2000, right? Like back in 2000, um, you've been doing this work since then. Tell us a little bit about why you chose this path or how did you fall into this path or why did God put you on this path of sales and coaching with people to creating more and less time? Let's rewind the clock a little bit. 
Yeah, I'm going to rewind it way, way deeper just to give you context of my childhood because I know that that actually built me for sales because I got into sales right out of college and went into real estate. I didn't know anything about sales. However, I was actually born, um, raised by a single dad. My mom was schizophrenic, so I was actually in and out of foster care. I was in and out of people's homes, grandparents, cousins, aunts and uncles, and so I was always networking, right? You know, you're, everything is sales. Yeah. Right. Your relationship, your friendships, your partners. And I just really got good at connecting with people, um, you know, in a, in, a, in a very vulnerable way at a very young age. And then whenever there was a sales competition, like we'd sell magazines in school for fundraising yeah. or chocolates or dish towels. I grew up in Iowa. So, you know, we had all these little interesting things. And I was always the top person because I, I I think I was blessed with the opportunity to have a single dad and go through all that because I was fearless. I could talk to anybody and not be, you know, afraid. And so that helped me build that ability and emotional intelligence to know that sales is just relationships, building trust and rapport, connecting at the heart level. So when I got into real estate by happenstance, because I studied journalism, speaking and writing were always my passions. Um, I didn't know anything about real estate, but this is what I did. Um, my mentor, he had a coach and he did daily lead generation, which essentially for him was like a hundred calls or something like that. So I was like, oh, well, I was an athlete in college and was a marathoner at that time. So I knew how important coaching was. So I hired a coach who told me what to do and how to do it. And then I had my mentor modeling that for me all the time. And I was only working part time actually. Um, and I made six figures. And as a realtor, I actually worked mornings mostly and very little on the weekends, which as you can imagine, most realtors are like seven days a week, 24 seven, 365. And I, I didn't want that. I wanted to create more in less time. I know we we're gonna get yeah. to that. And so I had passions, I had hobbies, I was doing marathons, I was doing all these things and I was able to really just laser beam focus, build those connections daily and boom, before you know it, that that set me on a course of, you know, essentially four different sales verticals and and just really loving sales as opposed to a, the thing that I hear a lot is, oh, I'm not a salesperson. I, I, hate, I hate sales when everything is sales. So I think that's yeah. that's a good place to start. Yes, it is. And I'm so glad you said that because everything is sales right now. Uh, by the way, Lois is selling herself. By the way, every single time I open my mouth on my podcast, I'm selling myself, my brand, uh, what I do, the podcast. It it really is. So you're I I love to call it enrolling, right? How many times have for those of you that are parents, how many times have you enrolled your children into doing their chores before dinner, or enrolled them into getting their homework done, or enrolled them into taking you know the dog for a walk or picking up the dog poop in the backyard, right? So we enroll our dogs to go outside and go to the bathroom. We're constantly enrolling by um, producing an outcome for them that's appetizing, right? Producing an outcome for them of something that they want. So it's like, hey, if you want to go play with your friends, get your homework done and you can go play with your friends faster. That's a great outcome. It's what they want to do. They want to go play with their friends. So they're like, boom, I'm going to knock that out, right? And go do that. So um, so I'm so glad you're here to talk to us about sales and getting more done now. Now let's talk about um, a time that you took the leap before we get more into uh, the, the root of the conversation today. Back in in April of 2020, what happened in your life? Like what, what, what happened around then? Well, we all know what was going on with the pandemic, but what happened with you specifically? Well, it was even a little bit before that. I'm going to rewind a little bit. In December of uh, 2019, I keep in mind, I had just relocated my family to Southern California. So I was, I was more or less starting um, all over with a local network. Anyway, I had no online business no online business at all, no podcast, no email list, um, hated social media. I'm just going to say it. I don't like that word, but it's true. I was like, oh, I don't like social media. And I was like literally ready to get off of it. And I also had a massive breakthrough. I, I decided to stop selling for other companies because mm -hmm. at that time I was doing sales for other, other companies being recruited as a top salesperson, top recruiter. It was natural, but I was just so tired of it. And so I was poising myself to launch in January of 2020 my own sales coaching business, like for nice. real, you know, I'd been doing it kind of on the side because I was still scared. Uh, all of the things, right? The limiting beliefs were all of the off. things. 
Mm-hmm. However, I just before the pandemic, I, I decided to launch that. And then a couple of other unfortunate events happened just to give you guys context. Um, my brother dropped dead of alcoholism. And then mm. two months later, April of 2020, my mom died right after him. Oh my gosh. So keep in mind, I share that, you know, just because I also know a lot of people have lost loved ones during this journey um, of the last three years. But also I had pandemic homeschool shelter in place in March. So it was like, boom, boom, boom. And my husband, oh, by the way, his income was going away. So mama, thankfully I had a background Mm. in how do we create more in less time. And I I also became a 12 week year certified trainer. Great book. I I coach with that now um, because it's all about the science of periodization, peak performance, focus, productivity, so on and so forth and time blocking. So I found with homeschooling and, and grief recovery and all of the things, I literally only had about two or three hours a day to go all in on building that email list that essentially, right, we were all yeah. forced to do, launch the podcast, even though I was terrified, shaking in my boots. I hired a coach and I went all in and I went from April, you know, till September. I had zero email um, list to 5,000. I went from no podcast to launching a top 20 podcast with 150 reviews globally. And I was able to go from $0 a month to 10 K months. And then eventually to 20 to 30 to 40 K months in, you know, a nine month, or as I say, three, 12 week years, um, later. And it all came down to that laser beam focus that again, thankfully I had that in my twenties and started there because I knew that is what it would take to be able to handle all of the things and still do it with excellence. Yeah. I'm glad that you recognize that your childhood plays a huge piece into who you are today. Cause so many people, and I I even, you know, ask myself the question or ask God this question, like why that family, you know, like (laughs) there was a lot of abuse, you know, there was a lot going on. I really, I mean, I, my mom doesn't talk to me today and my siblings don't talk to me. It's almost like my apple just didn't fall far from the tree. It fell like in a completely different orchard in a different country. Right. Like, um, but I believe it was preparation. I believe it's all preparation uh, to build us to who we are today. And I wouldn't go back. You know, people are like, would you, wouldn't you want to go back and change your childhood? I'm like, no. I know that every single thing happened exactly the way it did. Even the bad stuff, right? Even the grief, even the loss of position, you know, and money for your husband, all of those things that happened in your life created and and maneuvered and moved you into the path and molded you into who you are today. And I believe God uses us as those individuals so that we have learned and can go teach others. Like now you have this knowledge to teach others and you could only do it from the wisdom and experience of everything that you've experienced in your life. Right. Absolutely. And I'm yeah. that's so cool. When you're on my podcast, I think we got to talk about that because I actually discovered when I went inward with my grief journey and yeah. I know we don't have time to go through all of that, but I, I discovered a lot of my stuff was ancestral trauma. So we're breaking generational curses, ancestral wounds, um, all of yeah. it comes up for us. And we just got to ask instead of why is this happening to me is what am I learning from this? What is it trying to teach me yeah. so that we don't keep repeating the cycles of, of generations before? Yeah. And I mean, we can't pass over the point that grief is is disheartening. It's heartbreaking, right? Grief is tough. And when I tell people God must have really needed, you know, your spouse or your dog or whatever, you know, for like a greater, I really, I really in my truly in my heart believe we're chosen early from this earth, maybe before we think that person needs to be chosen because there's something greater for them to do. And that's how my belief, right? And that's what I hold on to. And that's, you know, if someone is in pain, I would never want them to suffer on this earth if they could not suffer by passing through, right? And passing on. So again, we won't really get into grief today, but I love that you touched on that because there have been a lot of deaths lately. And just in my circle, so many people have had immediate deaths in their family that was not anticipated. And they're dealing with that grief right now. And so um, I'm glad that you touched on that. So you've really 
healed from the inside out, looked at your traumas. I, I believe as an entrepreneur, if you're listening to this right now and you know that there's some the healing that you need to do and some trauma you need to deal with, please take the time to work through that before scaling and growing and you know building because that right there is, is going to come up. And it's probably going to come up at an unforeseen time when you don't want it to. He's so expected. <laughs> that's right. Work through the trauma now. That is going creating that space and mm-hmm. getting rid of that. I call it unpacking the baggage because it's so heavy. Gives you the freedom to be able to um, approach each day um, with fresh perspective, um, feeling a, as a whole person, right? Because then we're not dragged down or pulled or we're not carrying this extra luggage that's not ours. And most of the time, what you're carrying isn't yours. It's other people's, but you're still carrying it. So we won't get into that today because neither one of us are doctors. You're not a doctor, right, Lois? I'm just checking. All right. So let's get into creating more in less time. So um, talk to us because I did this and what and let's let's share. Um, I did the same thing. Came out of corporate America, started a live radio show. You know, that I had no idea how to do it. We just figure it out. Right. Um, how did you build your email list? There's there's several different ways to do it. But what was the number one thing that you did that you started um, that you felt was the most success in building your email list? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so for my first 12 week year, I focused all on webinars. So I did a weekly webinar. I called it the five secrets to selling success. And I went all in on social media messaging because I, I used to be, I, I used to for lead generation do about 20 calls a day, smiling yeah. and dialing, right? Or go to networking events. Well, couldn't really do that. I mean, there was online events, but I, I just went, started though. There yeah. wasn't really t- as many going on as you thought. Yeah. So I, I had my handy dandy lead generation prospecting sheet next to me and I just maniac on a mission, a hundred messages a day on Facebook. And then I still made some phone calls and I, I, I tapped into my warm market for that first um, 2000 people mm-hmm. um, in order to be able to have like what I would call again, the, the, the confidence because I didn't know much about cold market approach at that time online. So mm-hmm. I went with the warm market approach. So I reached out to anybody, everybody that knew me and knew that I was reasonably yeah. good at sales. I wanted to say, hey, how's it going? How's sales right now? Oh, by the way, I have a webinar next week. You know, first connecting with them, seeing where they're at um, mentally and emotionally, spiritually, physically, and then invited them. And so every opt in that I got, or if they didn't opt in for the webinar, I basically opened up the conversation also saying that I was starting a podcast. Would they like to hear about it when it launched? So I, I actually had a, a two pronged approach. Got it. That's how I went from zero to 2000. And then I did a joint webinar with another influencer and was able to, to get way more opt ins and okay. kept going with that. Okay. So that's a good approach. Um, and when she's talking about warm, um, you know, these are people that know you. So uh, I see a lot of mistakes where you get emails in your email box, but you never save them as a contact in your email box. A lot of people don't do that, right? I don't, I'm sure you do, Lois, because you, you're just like, it's all about leads and prospecting. So, so many people email you, but I don't ever see, um, you know, when I talk to my clients, I'm like, so how many contacts do you have in your, in your email? They're like, what do you mean an email list? Or I'm like, in your email right now, your email box, how many contacts do you have? And they're like, none. And I said, so every email, you you don't save those people as contacts, like your regular emails back and forth, your friends, your maybe people you've worked with before. And they're like, no, I don't. I, that's like the easiest step to do. And I'm like, it is, right? So I started with that. I created a list out of the people that I uh, re- regularly would contact. And I sent them an email. And I started out with to just under 2000 people were my regular connections of people in my email box. This is how I started. And I want to share this with them because these are warm, right? They already know you. They've emailed you. You've emailed back and forth. They already know you and say, hey, I'm starting a business and I'm going to be sending out a newsletter. And I would love to have you connected on to see what I'm up to because these are the things in my future that I'm doing. Would you be so kind to want to like, you know, join in on that. And they're like, oh, that's so great. Congratulations, blah, blah, blah. And then I asked them to opt in, right? So then um, they had the option at that point. I didn't force anything on them to opt in. And that was kind of my first wave of taking who was already in my circle and not going out and doing all this effort to get more people, just taking who's already there 
right? Least effort, creating more and less time and just asking them, hey, do you, would you support me on this journey? I didn't ask them to buy anything from me. I just asked them to support me on the journey. Oh my gosh, yes, that's awesome. Now, later, if they opted out, that's okay because you want the people that are opted in to be engaged in your content. If they're not engaged, they're useless. So when someone opts out, I kind of do a thank you. That's no problem versus, oh my gosh, people are opting out of my list. I'm screwing up. I got to change everything around. You know, I'm more excited about it. So I just wanted to share that, Lois, with the listeners because it's that easy to get your mail list started. Start today. (laughs) And that's a good point, you know, because I noticed that uh, just like you, the first three months, I, I got a lot of friends. They weren't really my yeah. ideal customers. Then I had about 200 affiliates in it for my affiliate program. And I, I told them target market. I told them who to reach out to. And that grew my list to 5,000. Nice. However, I noticed uh, those first 2,000, uh, probably about 1,000 of them over time did unsubscribe. And just like you, it was feedback from the place. And again, my customers to begin with anyway. So it was it was a gift. Yeah, it was a gift. So continuing to grow your list um, that, I mean, you can be on summits to do that, right? You can be part of giveaways that other companies do where they'll offer your free gift and uh, to, uh, as a bundle for someone who registers for that. Uh, Optimizing other people's communities to build your list is key, right? That's creating more and less time. What are some other uh, benefits, would you say, uh, Lois, into really um, for you to get leads right now? Let's talk about it because you've got you've got tools that you've created. You use the 12-week year. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but I actually launched a 12-week year sprint in the beginning of this year. Uh, I had no idea that that was what you did. And I, I, I just, it's just based on the book and it was to get everyone in my, in my circle launched off to a great year, right? Let's start it right in the beginning of January. January. Let's get you in your 12-week year, hunkering down to really focus on a goal that you want to hit to show that you can do it, right? If you've got the accountability and the outline and and the process and procedures, you know, already there and outlined for you to do it. So, how, you know, in your lead um, generation, how does that work for you now in creating more and less time? What's your yeah. process on that? Absolutely. And I've had virtual assistants help with this. I do need to mention that because there's no way I'm, I'm all about balance. I used to be a binge drinking workaholic <laughs> and that could have killed me. Um, and I was making all the money in the world and I, I don't give a flying, you know, to have all the money in the world and not have good sleep, good health. That's my brand, healthy and wealthy and wise. So I just, I just want to remind people that you know, you've got to have support. Um, so, so just yeah. to disclaimer on that. So with with the help of my virtual assistants, you know, I, I leverage LinkedIn events um, and would be inviting people to speed networking events, free events, um, being able to jo- JV, joint venture partner, like I shared, uh, one of the things I did early on in, in 2020 was to partner with someone else who had a list. Um, these I'm just like rapid fire giving you all the things. And then I also have um, Facebook groups. I have a couple of Facebook groups. One is my Healthy and Wealthy and Wise community. And then I have another one that I just launched called um, Breaking Generational Curses for Your Health and Wealth. Again, tr- attracting that ideal um, target, either prospect or referral partner, because um, I don't see everyone as a suspect or a prospect, as we say, I see that more of the referral partners and who do they know. And so then I ask every single person that joins, hey, thank you so much for joining. What would you like to learn about in this group? And oh, by the way, would you like to have more value by being a part of my email list? And so those are my my standard things that I, I go through. And, and usually, one more thing, I focus on one of them for a whole 12 week year, less is more. And mm-hmm. that way you have a, a foundation built on rocks as opposed to, or, or bricks as opposed to quicksand. And so that's the other thing I see people making a mistake on when fleet generation, like you said, yes, it's good to be everywhere, 
but it's, it's a physically inhuman yeah. to be able to do it all. Um, so the only reason I'm on two platforms, Facebook and LinkedIn is because of my virtual assistants. And yeah. those, those are the things that keep it more automated and keep it going. I'm not a fan of Facebook ads. I've never done paid advertising, so I can't speak to that myself. It's all more of that warm market approach and, yeah. and giving something of value and asking them to opt in. So I'm really into Instagram and uh, I have young daughters. I'm going to say young daughters, but they're in their thirties <laughs> and in uh, twenties and uh, that are um, utilizing Instagram to grow their businesses, right? Whether they're real estate agents. Um, I have two that are online influencers and they um, market East Valley businesses and the East Valley businesses pay them to advertise and market for them because of their following. And my husband and I just bought a business with uh, one of our sons and a daughter-in-law, and it's a mobile pizzeria here in Arizona for events and private events. Very, it's a very luxury private events, you know, weddings. And we last night we literally have owned this business for two weeks. And last night we got our first sale from Instagram. Someone saw us, connected wow. with us, went straight to the website, filled out the form. They have a wedding coming up. Boom, done. Um, it's that fast. It. I love. Instagram. I've been using it a lot more and I have found more results off of utilizing Instagram because people are utilizing it not only for content, entertainment, but for purchases. There's a lot of shopping that happens on Instagram. So again, you got to find your flavor. And I'm glad you said that because I have a whole team behind me, uh, Lois, and you have to find your flavor. But you know, when when you see this podcast come out and it's got a little audio of Lois on Instagram and then it's on Facebook and then you see it on LinkedIn and then she's being tagged to collaborate and then you see the actual episode come out. We tease it a little. Then the episode comes out. I'm not doing any of that. My team's doing that. Right. So but I got them all set up and they know exactly what to do with it. But that's what I'm talking about being seen everywhere. You don't just want to do this podcast once and then be like, well, that was great. We're done. Right. Right now, Lois is going to go promote it when she gets the audio and she's going to share it and her team is going to share it. And then, you know, she's going to promote it when it comes out and then she's going to utilize it to tell her, you know, everyone in her area. Hey, you guys in my community, come check out this interview I did. Here's some tips I gave on how you can create more in less time. It's more value add now for her community because they're also getting the tips to be able to execute. Right. Yes. So Lois, super, super smart. What else do you want to share with us today before we uh, wrap up? I know that uh, we'll talk about contact information in a minute, some free gifts that you have for them. But what is it? What what one thing is just a really crucial step for the listeners to remember when they're creating more in less time? I, I think the one thing you already said was focus on one thing at a time. Don't it's. <laughs> Should we really talk about it? It's about like uh, New Year's resolutions and everyone's like, I'm going to eat whole foods. I'm going to work out six days a week. I'm going to join a gym. I'm gonna, not going to eat sugar. I'm going to be gluten free. I'm going to be dairy free. And it's like, seriously, you're going to do all that right now? They, ne they always fail. It doesn't work. But if they said, I'm just going to drink a bottle of water more a day for like a month, I bet they would. And then if they said, now I'm going to walk a mile three days a week, that's you right. It's when, once we get into it and the repetition of it, it's a lot easier than piling 50 things on at one time and trying to do it because we burn out. So what would you say on creating more more in less time? Yeah, it may seem a little esoteric and a little bit unexpected or out there. However, um, a daily meditation practice. It's not out there. I, because, I meditate every single day. Yeah, it's part of part of what happened for me uh, was I made all this money. I had this email list, but I was still struggling with my relationship with alcohol. My husband, my marriage was falling apart. I was making 40K months, but again, uh, feeling disconnected. And so I went on a 20 month journey. Um, I chose to uh, sit with ayahuasca plant medicine, work with microdosing, yeah. really heal because of the grief was still there. To your point, the grief was still there. And I was also noticing the clients I was attracting weren't really my ideal. And so as within, so without. So it took me a full year and a half to get into that groove of now I crave the meditation. We're heading into a whole new world. Everyone's triggered by external events. And if you're triggered, uh, you're gonna cause disease in your body. You're not gonna sleep well. You're not gonna show up 
well on a sales call and you're you're basically in a sense and yeah. gonna end up working too much because you feel like oh my gosh i have to do this i have to have the perfect you know whatever the landing page the, all of that and so for me i found that meditation practice every morning you know start with five minutes eventually I did 30 because the common theme I saw with all of the thousands of people I talked to since the pandemic is so many people uh, were looking for that end result, the money, the sale, mm. the, the email list, the tactics, whatever. They were not going within and really quieting the mind and connecting with the heart at the deepest level and really asking themselves, do I really need to do this thing? Am I over committing? Am I people pleasing? Do I have healthy boundaries? So working on that simultaneously with the 12 week year could not only change your life and elevate mm -hmm. it, it could potentially save you so much time and make you so much more money. A thousand percent. Yes. I know that for sure. So um, Lois, that was like amazing amazing um, tips uh, that you shared with us today. Tell our listeners what gift you have for them. Uh, we have all of the information at your fingertips for everyone who's like, oh my gosh, I want to connect with her. I want to take advantage of this 30-day free gift. Uh, tell us the best way. Tell the listeners exactly what you want them to go do to go connect with you and where. Yeah, LinkedIn is best. If yeah. you can go to LinkedIn and look for Lois Kofi. If you're not on LinkedIn, I am absolutely on Facebook, Instagram. I also uh, curated a client mm -hmm. from there the other day. I'm, that's in my 12 week year. You. I'm playing there right now. So at Lois Kofi. Um, and really my Healthy and Wealthy and Wise Facebook community is, is where it's at. So look for Healthy and Wealthy and Wise podcast okay. uh, on Facebook. And then as far as my gift goes, um, it's my uh, birthing creation from last year after I went through a lot of that grief recovery, um, releasing addictive behaviors, coming back to center in my truth and my balance. Um, Healthy and Wealthy and Wise is my subscription that is an extension of my podcast community that's uh, filled with classes of helping you um, get into meditation, work with your higher self, go within um, yeah. so that you can create more and less time. And then we also have Kundalini yoga. We have breath work. We have all of the tools that helped me be able to lose 30 pounds last year and be my healthiest version of myself for my husband, my family, and of course, my clients. And we do have a heal your relationship with money challenge inside of there in the member vault. So there's a, a vault and live classes um, to help you be balanced and whole and and rock this life and be a light to the world. I love it. Thank you so much, Lois, for giving that generous gift to um, our listeners today. Really appreciate that. And thank you again and kudos to our listeners for, you know, really driving our podcast up to um, to the presence that it has today with the listenership. I'm, I'm excited that we've spent years building it and uh, it's all because of you. So thank you for coming back week after week and, and uh, learning from these amazing guests um, that I'm a, um, able to attract to, um, to this podcast. And I just want to remind each one of you, you know, you're the only you that's ever been, you're the only you that will ever be. Think about that for a minute. You're it that will ever be. How you decide to create more in less time is up to you. It has to be right for you. And I love that she talked about, that Lois talked about having the time to meditate in the morning. I start every morning and everyone knows this because I've been talking about it for years with a couple of hours to myself to work out, to meditate, to write gratitudes. It's the first thing I do when I get out of bed, uh, to read, to pray. This is the time that I get my mind straight. And it's always when I get all my downloads and all of the, you know, the the secret sauce for the stuff that I do and the, and the names of the women that I need to reach out to. It always happens in that moment when I'm silent and I'm pulling back. So take that time for yourself and, and make the choice today that you want to create more in less time. This, is, this year is about working smarter, not harder, ladies. So let's make sure we get out there and do that. And thank you so much, Lois Coffee, for joining us today um, on the Take the Leap podcast with Colleen Biggs. To all of you, uh, until next time, be you and be strong. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye for now. 
We hope you enjoyed our show today as our guests shared their secrets on designing their life by taking the necessary leaps to expand their influence and attract the right people and clients into their lives. To start these easy steps for yourself, be sure to visit www.colleenbiggs.net forward slash freebies to download the seven ways to increase your exposure today. 